Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm Kathy Duplantis, and I'm looking forward to studying the Word of God with you today. Since I began posting Voice of the Covenant Bible Study, I've had over 1,292,000 views from people all over the world. You know, it's wonderful to be able to study the Word of God together with you. And I hope that you'll share this so that more people can study God's Word with us and be strengthened in their walk with the Lord. Before we begin our Bible study today, I want to take a moment to thank our wonderful ministry partners. Jesse and I are so thankful for your generous seeds that you faithfully sow each month. Together, we are reaching people and changing lives every day through programs like this weekly Bible study. And if you'd like to become a partner or give a one-time donation, you can use the information that's on the screen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that we have an opportunity to study today. Lord, I ask your blessing on everybody that's studying along with me. Touch them, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord. I thank you that they can have this, this holiday season, the best season yet, Lord, when they focus their hearts on you and on your word. Lord, we thank you that you can make a way where there is no way, that you bless your people when they seek you. In Jesus' name, amen. As you can see, Studio C has been decorated for Christmas. You know, Jess and I love this time of year, and we always look forward to celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And like most of you, we celebrate with decorations, with giving of gifts, and with wonderful celebrations. You know, it's really the most wonderful time of the year. And this month's Bible study is titled, The Four Celebrations of Christmas. Let's turn to Luke 1 to begin our study. I'm already here. I hope you have your Bible, maybe a notebook, and that you'll get ready to get into the Word of God and see something new this Christmas that will bless you that maybe you can share with, with your family or someone else this Christmas. You see, the first celebration of Christmas that we're going to study is the celebration of the promise of the Savior. And we're going to read Luke chapter 1, verse 30, 26 through 35, and I have it in the King James Version of the Bible here. It says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God in, unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast her in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give him, give unto him the throne of his father, David, and he shall reign over the the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary, then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the, of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God." Praise the Lord. You know, Mary is, is a wonderful example for us all. She didn't understand all of the implications for her life that lay ahead, but she humbly submitted to the will of God. You know, Jesus is the Greek version of the Hebrew word name Joshua, which means the Lord saves. And he would be called the son of the most high. We just read this in the scripture. And also he would be a carbon copy of his father bearing the divine nature because Jesus would be both divine and human. You know, theologians describe this as the hypostatic union, and that's the combining of, the divine, of a divine nature and a human nature perfectly into one person. Indeed, he is God in the flesh. Now in our study, I want us to turn to 2 Samuel chapter 7. That is in the Old Testament. This chapter records the covenant that God made with David, promising to carry on David's line forever. And this promise would be fully realized in the birth of Jesus Christ. I want you to see that Jesus would also be the fulfillment of the Old Testament promises of the coming of the son of David, the Messiah, who will rule forever. So we're going to read together in 2 Samuel chapter 7. We're going to read verses 12 through 16. It says, And when thy days be fulfilled... And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chastise 
chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. So God was talking to David about, of course, his natural son, but mostly talking about Jesus Christ. David's earthly dynasty ended actually four centuries later. But Jesus Christ, a direct descendant of David, was the ultimate fulfillment of this promise, which you can see also recorded in Acts chapter 2, where the story is retold there. You know, it's the Messiah's throne that will be established forever. Christ will reign for eternity now in this spiritual, his spiritual kingdom and in heaven, and later on earth in the New Jerusalem. Now let's look again in the Old Testament to the book of Isaiah chapter 9. In Israel, it was generally understood that the Messiah was to come from the tribe of Judah and the throne of David. So I want us to read this, and it's probably familiar to some of you, but it's, we're going to read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through verse 7. It's important that we read these beautiful t scriptures during the Christmas season again. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and, the peace, and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You know, every born again believer uh, to, to us, Christmas is a celebration of the promise of the Savior. And we're going to look again in the New Testament, turn back to Luke. We're going to look at chapter 2. I want us to read the story of a very old man that was looking intently for the promise of the Savior. We're going to read Luke chapter 2, verse 25 through uh, 35. Let me see. Read along with me. It'll be on the screen if you don't have your Bible. So it's important that you see the word for yourself. Verse 25, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he um, him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against, yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. See, the Jews, Jews were well acquainted with the Old Testament prophecies that spoke of the promise of the Messiah. Joseph and Mary were amazed when this old man took their son in his arms and spoke such stunning words. Simeon said that Jesus was a gift from God and he recognized Jesus as the Messiah who would be a light to the entire world. Simeon prophesied that Jesus would have a paradoxical effect on Israel. Some would fall because of him while others would rise. With Jesus, there would be no neutral ground. People would either joyfully accept him or totally reject him. And as Jesus' mother, Mary, would be grieved by the widespread rejection that he would face, that was what Simeon was prophesying to her that day. You know, this is the first note of sorrow in Luke's gospel when we read this, because Jesus was born to die for the sins of the world. So Christmas is a celebration of the promise of the Savior. Let's turn to John chapter 3. We're gonna, I want us to close our lesson today by reading one of the most well-known verses in the Bible. You probably could quote it, but I want us to read it today. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the first celebration of Christmas. It's the celebration of the promise of the Savior for whosoever that believes. It is the reason for the season. It is why we light up our homes and give gifts to our loved ones. His birth, 
sacrificial death, and resurrection or reasons to celebrate. Let me pray with you before we close today. Father, I thank you for your word that we've studied together. We've looked at the Old and the New Testament, seeing this great promise of a Savior. Lord, I pray that the words that we've read today will uplift and strengthen people to know that your word is so true and can be relied upon. Everything that you've written is your promise to us. Lord, I should blessing on everybody today. Lord, wherever they are in the world, touch them and strengthen them in their body, in their mind, and in their spirit. Build them up. By your word, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope you'll join me next week for the continuation of the four celebrations of Christmas. See you next week right here in Studio C for Voice of the Covenant Bible Study. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching today. I know that you have been blessed, and I'm sure that you don't want to miss any of our new content. So like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell. That notification bell will let you know every time we post something new. So like subscribe, and hit that bell, okay? See you next time. Bye-bye. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.